Okay, that's cool. They were gonna build a bachelor pad for the boys, for the quail. Let's do it. So this is gonna be super simple. Uh, being that only boys will be in here, these will be males that we're not even really holding for breeding, we're just holding for harvesting. Or culling, I should say, or selling, because culling doesn't always mean killing, eating. Uh, it can mean moving to somebody else's farm, somebody else's house. Basically, we don't need a roll cage for eggs. You know, a quail just lay their eggs and most pin designs, the floor is sloped and the eggs just run out. We don't need that for the boys. As far as I know, there's only two genders of quail. Quail don't need a whole lot of space. Uh, they need something to be about a foot high, maybe 18 inches deep. If you're wondering why I build everything on the floor, it's because I've got a 10 month old and everything's on the floor. No, just kidding. Your garage floor is gonna be level, like very level. I could build saw horses and, you know, a nice little table to, uh, you know, put things on and build things on, but kind of what you guys are sitting on is my nice fancy DeWalt table uh, on the tripod. So um, one of these days I'll buy a nice fancy taller, you know, six foot tripod. I just don't see the need right now. Depends on how precise you want to be. You always want to cut on the outside of your line of the board that you don't want. This will be my scrap once I make this cut. So right here you get two options. If this was for females, this is where I would put my sloped floor, my egg roll, egg rolls. So the eggs would roll out. Up here, I'm gonna use some, uh, oh, they're auto parts drain pans, uh, actually to catch the manure and whatnot. So, and I got that idea from Terry over at uh, Coternix Corner, and I'll link his channel below. The reason I made it three feet wide is because my hardware cloth is three feet wide. Just because I have enough material doesn't mean I want to put that hardware cloth right on the edge uh, because again, we're just keeping in quail and it's expensive. So what we did was we rolled it out and we stapled it down. You can be pretty generous with your staples. Again, it's quail. I do see one spot though that I didn't like. But see my spacing here, uh, it's almost perfectly along the edge of that two by four. That helps you keep a straight, steady line. Same thing going this way. So that's one way of keeping it straight. And then to keep the hardware cloth from shifting, stagger your staples. North, south, east, west, north, south, east, west, north, south. Ooh. Or you can fire one into nothing, but just stagger them and that'll keep your uh, hardware cloth even stronger. This is gonna be the top. This is gonna be the bottom. So yes, on the bottom, I used hardware cloth. 
A lot of people don't use that because they say it hurts their uh, quail's feet when they fall through, things like that. Some people use a solid bottom uh, so that they can clean it out easier. But I'm gonna have drip pans, like I mentioned, underneath the bottom of the quail pen. Uh, that side over there is gonna be a door, which I'm getting ready to build. But a lot of people use this. I'm gonna use this for my females. Remember, this is a male cage, a bachelor pad. Um, so I'm not too worried about their feet. I hate to say it like that, but what I am gonna do is, uh, Sawyer Ridge and Walker Farm Fam told me about something with their rabbits that they do. And I've already done that in my rabbit hutch build, but I'm gonna put a ceramic tile in one corner. So if the quail ever get tired of running around on the hardware cloth, they can stand on that tile. Um, it'll also be cool even on the hottest of days. So what we have is Coternix quail, jumbo Coternix. And I've actually been messaging Terry over at Coternix, Coternix Corner um, about a couple of his cage builds. Wait, when we got these quail, they're doing it right now. Look, see them pecking on each other? Mm -hmm. So when we got these quail, we got them from an old man about 30, 45 minutes away. And I say old man just to paint the picture, I guess. None of the females had feathers on their backs. And when I say um, feathers on their backs, I mean like they were gone. Uh, it wasn't just from the males being a little bit rough and missing a few around the necks, they were all gone. So we immediately sprayed them with uh, blue coat and separated the males from the females entirely. But we do have uh, two males in with a female right now, but the female's kind of in a cage within a cage, if that makes sense, because she was actually picking on the other females. So we're trying to figure out who's picking on who here and ultimately who wants to get eaten. Let's rescue, uh, I say rescue, let's get these two males out of here. And, uh, you know, for right now, we're gonna use the traditional mason style, mason jar style water and feeder, uh, but ultimately we will be doing an automatic water. Um, I know it looks kind of rough and nasty in there, but this has just been a temporary pen. Uh, they've been in here for like, what, 24, 48 hours maybe? Yeah, give or take, so. And the females are over here. Thank <laughs> you. 